My dargish, what's a dargish? Arsaditz, he used to frequent the leather market. Well, Amarlin, he told me, my dargish, what's a dargish? Arsaditz Allah. It's a bed that has a leather piece, which means that it's a leather piece that's stretched across the frame, and that's what the mattress is placed on. So you see that a dargish is not an arsadigada. And continue with this. Itmar was stated, Ezu mita be ezu dargash. What's the difference between a mita and a dargash? So Amr Birmia, he says, mita masargad aysa al gaba. A bed, the ropes are woven on top of the frame of the bed. They're woven in a crisscross pattern, and then the mattress is placed on top of that. However, the ropes are woven within the frame of the bed. There's holes made in the frame of the bed. The ropes are woven through that, and then the mattress is placed on those ropes. But now I think we're asked on our definition of mita. Mesve, the Mishnah says, Kli eats me and toma. When is it that a wood keli is going to be makabal toma? We know that a wood keli is makabal toma only once it's finished. So hamita va arisa, a bed and a crib, mishe shufam ar hadag. Once they're smoothed down or sanded down with fish skin, then it's considered finished. Now the imita mistaregas hagaba, if you want to say that the ropes of a bed are woven on the top of the frame, meaning the ropes are covering the frame, so Lomali Shifas are Hadag. Why does he have to smooth down the wood with the fish skin? You don't see the wood anyway, it's being covered over with ropes. So Ikmar says you're right. Elaha Vaha Migufan. Both a mita and a dargash, the ropes are woven from within the frame itself. However, mita uli vafuke bebezini. The ropes of the bed are woven in and out of holes that are in the frame itself. Dargash a uli vafuke bafkasa. Dargash, the ropes of this leather sheet, they're woven in and out of loops, and the loops are attached to those holes that are in the frame of the bed. And now just about this halacha that an avil has to overturn the beds in their house. Amar Yaakov bar Acha, Amar Rebbe, mita shnaklital yotzen, a bed which its poles are sticking up. This is referring to a canopy bed that has one pole in the middle of the headboard one pole in the middle of the footboard, and a canopy is draped over these poles like a tent that protects the person who's sleeping from flies and bothersome insects. So Zaykva, the bed is stood up straight, Vidaya, and that's sufficient. It doesn't have to be turned over, because it can't be turned over, it has these poles sticking out of it. And now just regarding this machlekes, Rav Shimon Gamliel and the Tanakama from Abed Aleph, what do we do with the Dargash as an Avel? Do we have to do something special to it, or do we leave it? So Amar Yaakov Bar Idi, Amar Bishum Alevi, Halacha Kram Shimon Gamliel, the Halacha Kram Shimon Gamliel, the top of this Amud, that he has to undo its loops, let the leather piece fall, and that's what an Avel has to do to a Dargash. And we continue with another Mishnah, Hanoi Domino Ir, a person made another from a city, that he's not going to go into the city. Year, he's allowed to go into the Tchum of the city, but the Asali Khanus Ibura, he's not allowed to go into the Ibur, the extension of the city. Now, what's the Tchum and the Ibur of the city? So we know that on Shabbos, one is not allowed to walk more than 2,000 Amas from where the city ends. That's called the Tchum of the city. Now, there's also something called the Ibur, or the extension of the city, which is where the Tchum can be measured from if there's a house that's within 70 and a bit Amas from the city. So that 70 Amas of space from where the main part of the city ends until this house is called the extension of the city. So if a person makes a nether, he's not going to go into the city, he's allowed to enter the Tchum of the city, but not the Ibor area, that 70 Am extension, or the city itself. Another halacha, of Hanodim and Abayas, if a person made a nether, he's not going to go into a house, Asur Min Ha'agaf Vilifnim, he's not going to go anywhere from the door frame to the inside of the house. Now the Gemara addresses the first part of the Mishnah, Minal Dibur, Demasa, Kemasadami, how do we know that the extension of the city is considered to be part of the city, and therefore when the guy makes a nether, he's not going to go into the city, he's also not allowed to go into the Ibor of the city. So Amar Biachin, he answers the Amar because the Pasuk says, It was when Yeshua was in Yerichai, and this is the whole story how Yeshua met a Malach. Now, my Yerichai, what does that mean he was in Yerichai? Even if you want to say Yerichai Mamish, Yeshua was actually in the city of Yerichai. Look, say, but the Pasuk says, Yerichai said Gerasim Mesugeras, the Yerichai was completely sealed off. This is talking about before Yeshua and Am Yisrael went into Yerichai. So it can't be that Yeshua was actually in Yerichai, El Hashemami no must be, but Yibura, that he was in the extension of the city, and it's still considered like he was in the city itself. The Gemara asks, Eim Afil Betchuma, why don't we say that he was in the Tchum of the city, and it's still considered like he's in the city? The Gemara says that can't be because Haksib Betchuma says regarding the Tchum of the city, Um Adoy Semim Michutz Lo'ir, and you shall measure it outside the city. This is the Pasuk telling us that we should measure the 2,000 Am Tchum of the city, and the Pasuk says very clearly, measure it outside the city. So we see that the Tchum is considered outside the city, but the extension, the Ibra of the city, is considered to be part of the city. And continuing to explain the Mishnah, we had said, Hanoi Debin Abayas, if a person made a nether from a house, Enoi Asr El Min Agaf Vilifinim, he's only Asr to enter the Agaf, the door frame, and towards the inside of the house. The Gemara makes an inference from this, Avol Min Agaf Vilachutz, but from the door frame towards the outside, Lai, it implies that there's no Isra to enter and he's allowed to stand there. But now Master of Mari of Mari asks the following question, and this question once again brings up the concept of Tsaras of a house. We know that when there's a Negat Tsaras on the wall of a house, the Kayin walks in, and if he decides it's a Negat Tsaras, he has to be Saiger, he has to close up the house. So the Pasuk tells us, and the Kayin shall leave the house. Now, Yachal, Yelch, Lebes of Yaskir, you might think that if the Kayin's leaving the house that has a Negat, he completely leaves, he goes back to his house, and then he officially closes off that house. Tom Lamer, that's why the Pasuk says, El Pesach Abayas, he leaves the house to the entrance of the house. Now, El Pesach Abayas, if you want to say he goes to the entrance of the house, Yachol, you might think, that he should stand under the threshold, which means he stands by the threshold, and then he closes off the house. 
Tava Lerman. That's why the Pasuk says, Min habayas. He has to go from the house. Achiyat min habayas kuloi, implying he has to completely leave the house. Okay, Tzad, how do we apply this? Meaning, what's a kind supposed to do? He has to leave the house, but he can't go home, but he has to be near the house. So what does he do? Oymir betzara mashkaif v'yaskir. He stands right outside the mashkaif, right outside the threshold, and then he closes off the house. Now, it's from this line that we just read that Rav Mari is asking his question, but let's just complete the b'risa before we explain the question. Uminayin shim hal chabesa v'hizkir. How do you know that if he ended up going to his house, the kind went back home, and then he closed off this house that has the nega? Oish amatachas hashakov v'hizkir. Or he stood under the shakov, he stood under the threshold, and he closed off the house. Shez giray musker, that it's still considered like the house is closed off. Tamalayim, because the Pasuk says, v'hizkir as habayis, mikom lakayim. In whichever way he closed off the house, it's still considered a valid closing off of the house, and he did his job as he was supposed to. But now going back to our question, Rav Mari says, we see from this that the kain has to leave the house, and that he has to be on the outside of the mashkaif, on the outside of the threshold, that he's not allowed to be on the outside of the doorframe, because the outside of the doorframe is still considered to be part of the house. So how can we make an inference from our Mishnah that when a person says he's not going to go into a house, he's only not allowed to be on the inside part of the doorframe, but he's allowed to be on the outside part. By a kain being soiger house from Saras, the outside part of the doorframe mm. is still considered part of the house. So Gmar says, no, it's not a question. Shani gabe bias, specifically by a house, when we're dealing with Saras, it's totally different. Dechzeh, because the Pasuk says, min ha bias, achi yatsam bias kuloi, telling us that the kain has to completely leave the house. So that's a special Pasuk by Saras, but it doesn't apply by the case of Nadarim, so therefore when a person makes an that from a house, he's only ushered to go from the agaf, from the door frame, and the inside of the house, but not from the outer part of the door frame. We're going to stop here for the day, pick up tomorrow with a brand new Mishnah, for now, everyone should have a wonderful, wonderful day. day.